And now, Silicon Angle TV and Wikibon.org present a focus spotlight. Live from Las Vegas at VM World 2011, host John Furrier and Dave Valente illuminating cloud conversions with support from HP Cloud System, the most complete integrated platform for building and managing clouds. Okay, we're back. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and we're here inside the Cube with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we are here with a couple of cloud advisors from HP, Archie Reed, uh, Cube alum. Archie, good to see you again, and Charlie Bess. Charlie, I, I don't good think you've been you. on the Cube before, right? Is this your no. first time? Right, well, the first welcome. Time. <laughs> Thanks. All right, good to see you guys. Um, we're talking cloud, you know, cloud advisors. Uh, Archie, we talked uh, last year at Oracle Open World, and sort of had a Good intro to yep. what you guys are doing, but why don't you uh, start by telling us uh, briefly what, what the Cloud Advisor you know, group does at HP. Cloud Advisors are basically HP's sort of best and brightest, uh, the folks that... Uh, if you do say so yourself. If I do say so myself. <laughs> this is the way they describe us. We've just fallen into the model. And essentially our goal is to try and help people work out how to work with HP, how to deal with all these things that are going on. And uh, we do a lot of different things. We have a lot of varied backgrounds in the Cloud Advisor program. And it could be from labs, it could be from security, it could be from the business units, but generally with a senior technologist over the cloud for HP. And if you've met one Cloud Advisor, you've met one Cloud Advisor. Each of them has an area of specialty like Archie's with security. I'm more in the services space, so. Oh, okay, great. Two great topics. That, uh, so, so the question that, that's come up is obviously VMware is the center of the show here. It's VMworld and uh, virtualization, uh, network virtualization, SSD, storage, big data. Um, all the security questions came up and, and how to get to clouds. We're seeing a trend where there's more demand right now for actual cloud solutions, not so much future tense kind of conversation. Sure. So last year was very much lay out the architecture. This year it's like, who's delivering? And the products are starting to come in. So the question I asked uh, SR, uh, SHI was, the balance around architecture and design and delivery, compliance and doing the right thing. You know, is there I, a different? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Over the last year, we've shifted the conversation from a little bit about you know, what is cloud, what can it do for me, uh, to the point of uh, really trying to have people understand what the benefits are for them as opposed to what everybody is telling them what cloud is. So understanding the architecture, understanding the risks, and we've moved it to a discussion about how do we actually do this, which is things like how do I move data securely to the cloud and what is the process for that? Identifying what's appropriate, what are the systems I need to put in place to do it, and uh, obviously we have a lot of management tools to help people do that. but. It's the journey, right? It is the process that we put in play with a lot of customers. Uh, example being, uh, I'm out in Australia right now, we've got a very large company in Australia, one of the top 25, uh, who are spread across the entire country. They're dealing with uh, regulatory issues, so we've uh, basically gone through a data classification exercise. They've gone through an exercise of what do we put into cloud versus what do we move in our data center. So we've gone through various app to cloud, app to virtualization, what's appropriate, what's not. And some of it doesn't belong in the cloud for them. And then we go through the other side, which is how do they communicate to that? Putting it all into the cloud doesn't mean it's accessible to everyone in their organization. Because while here in the States, we've definitely got a lot of high speed communications, that's not necessarily the case around the rest of the world. So it isn't just, you know, how do you move to the cloud, but what are the changes to how your employees, your customers are going to access the services that you still have to provide. And those are the real things that we're driving for these customers right now. And I'm glad that you brought up the whole issue of the architecture side of it, because the architecture is uh, as, at least as much a business issue as it is a technology issue. And, and the fact that you want to integrate the data and have the, so the, the word customer, or the data for customer is consistent, whether it's in a hybrid environment, inside or outside the data center, and then pulling together the user interface in many cases, because what you don't want to have happen is, say you use a software as a service uh, interface, you have your internal interface, you might have some other things from other providers, and that you uh, accost the user's uh, 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 attention span by trying to integrate it in their brain, because that just frankly will not work for very long. 
And uh, so thinking through the whole architectural implications of how this is going to better generate value for your business for each particular role is key. Yeah, and we've been talking about big data as well, and you know, we get, you got Cloud Air out there, we, we, we talked to the co-founder, my friend Amar Adala. And, and we heard it's easy to set up proof of concepts. The NetApp guys like, hey, you know, I can sure. I can use commodity hardware instead of proof of concept. But that homegrown hits a point. So that, that's kind of one one discussion. And the second discussion is, and we heard from last year of the M World, uh, HP's customers Carnegie Mellon and Dallas Cowboys, where they were just banging out some real cloud, which is essentially uh, some provisioned resources. So what's changed this year um, around around cloud deployment with HP solutions, cloud systems, and the stuff that they have? And two the role of data, because you can't just whip up a cloud, you got to take into account the data component. Yep. And not so much big data, but just data mobility, data security. You want to go? I'll let you do the first one, I'll do the second one. So I'll give you an example of what's, what's changed. So uh, for some of the customers, they've realized that uh, things like cloud bursting, the things we were talking about last year, the ability to move back and forth and, and basically uh, snap this up, snap it down at any point in time, it's actually a really hard thing to do. It isn't just the fact that you can run up a, a CRM system and suddenly support a particular marketing effort or something like that. There's all the data that goes behind that, there's all the processes that go behind that, and this analysis of what the data is behind the scenes is actually quite critical to whether they can put it into a service provider's cloud, even whether they can put it into their own clouds. And what we've seen with a lot of customers, I'll give an example of a large financial company we're working with, uh, they've realized that they essentially, uh, th this is something we've been advising a lot of people, have to become the broker and understand themselves what all the implications of those systems are. They don't necessarily care about the systems underneath anymore. They really want to deliver business value. And that is the change for IT that we've seen over the last year with a lot of companies. Yeah, I think as, as the organizations have begun to get experience with it, they begin to understand the pitfalls that are out there, begin to work around it, and look at it from a much more holistic perspective of how, as, as Archie pointed out, how is value generated for this? Because frankly, you know, the flashing lights and spinning disk drives don't generate any value. It's the actual usage of the information to make better business decisions yeah. and reduce that time to decision that's critical. Well, now, it's SAD, SSDs now. There won't be any more spindle. <laughs> that's right. We've been having a lot of conversations about SSD. If, if some of the guys around here have their way. Yeah, but, but it's, so it's, a, it's about usage too, right? It's about, you need to have that usage today, not tomorrow. There's when problems you, on the table today. And you also have to have that uh, relationship management aspect that CIOs may not have had to have quite that level of relationship management understanding and, and uh, development because it's not a case that you can dictate necessary to the cloud provider of this is the way this will work. No, you, there it's the self-selection kind of aspect of the cloud providers want to specialize in a certain way, optimize their environment for a certain uh, client class, and if you don't fit in there, you probably want to go to another uh, cloud provider, find another person. So sort of like in the old ERP days, if you have to make a whole bunch of modifications to the ERP system, you probably pick the wrong one and because it's not going to be sustainable over the yeah, long haul. So that haul. touches software, that touches you know, po your policies. I mean, you know, like, what, like what, if, if you have a, how, how, what have you seen in the customer base uh, with regard to say, things like a security incident, how it's defined, um, what's reported, uh, how much flexibility is there? This, this is a true challenge when you start thinking about public cloud especially. And no customer that we talk to that of any decent size has just said, yep, everything's going into the cloud. And when they start to think, okay, what can we put in the cloud? How are we going to deal with the issues? Not just understanding what data we want to put out there, but what, what happens when it goes wrong? So another aspect of what we do, a lot of, is work with the standards communities worldwide. Right? It isn't just US, it's Europe, it's Asia Pac, it's everywhere. And we spend a lot of time with uh, organizations like the Cloud Security Alliance, trying to rationalize what it means uh, in terms of audit security response, incident response, and trying to come up with ways that actually make sense so you can deal with the problems when they occur. And most cloud providers aren't there. So to Charlie's point, uh, when you want to select a certain cloud provider and you've got the criteria that you want, can you find anyone out there who meets at 100% today? Probably not, but I'll give you an example of something we demonstrated here, which was being able to provision to a, a government cloud uh, we partner with Harris, military grade, and they've basically signed up and said, yep, we're compliant with all of these things. And that can be a policy you can put into our management system and say, if this system must only go into this type of environment, 
can I flow through? Can I follow that process and deliver what I need to do to the business or the, the organization with that public cloud or does it have to stay within my control? Charlie, I wanted to ask you um, about services. Um, okay. It's an area that John and I have been talking about a lot. In fact, Silicon Angle recently launched a new publication called Services Angle. Um, we, John, John and I joked last year, John yeah. made storage sexy. Um, I think services is becoming sexy. So the whole thing, the, the theme that we've been talking about is the intersection of traditional IT services and transformational services with new web services. Um, when you say you focus on services in the cloud, what are you talking about? What do you see as that intersection? And, and, and how is the services angle changing? Well, the services, well, I've got 30 years of experience in the services space, so I've, I've seen a lot of different flavors of how we've approached services, all the way from uh, you know, the infrastructure as a service or ITO kind of things, all the way up through the business process outsourcing. And, and uh, one of the things that's changing is the sophistication, I would say, and the dynamic nature of the delivery of services. Uh, people do want to spin things up on, on, a, on a moment's notice, and we're not talking about just spinning up disk drives, but whole organizations to meet new product demands or, or new relationship demands, and then be able to spin them down at the same rate. That's a much more dynamic environment, I would say, than services has, has had to with, uh, withstand in the past. Yeah, so it sort of changes the notion of traditional IT services and evolves that into one that's you know, much more in line with what we think of as web services. And when you think about it, the whole concept of cloud is turning many things into services uh, that are multi-tenant and leverageable, et cetera, and with the kind of controls that Archie was talking about that make it so that you can do uh, those quick things in a, in a reliable, uh, repeatable way, because frankly, you know, all this automation that's in cloud can let you do stupid things just as fast as it lets you do smart things. So you need that checks and balances to prevent you from doing that. So I want to ask you guys, because um, I know we've talked about it in the past, uh, Archie, but bring some of the data on the highlights of the HP offerings, because you guys have some impressive offerings. I want, we I want to get that out there, get that out of the way, because you guys are doing some good work. Obviously the search is to back it up, just get that out there. So if we start from the top down maybe, certainly on the services side, we have a raft of uh, migration transformation services, and probably we're overusing the term services here, but essentially going through all the aspects of what's required to get this app into a cloud format. And you can't just lift and shift a lot of the applications. So we have application to cloud, application to virtual, all those sorts of things, and transformation of IT into the cloud. Moving down the stack, you've got the management software, the cloud service automation software, which has all of the policies, the automation, the orchestration, making sure that when things are breaking or they need to be rolled back, they can be, making sure that they happen as fast as you expect them to. And within all of that, there's all that policy management as well. And then you sort of move down into the stack, and a lot of what we've announced here uh, in, at the show is the, uh, the new cloud system capabilities in terms of what we've got, blades, all those capabilities in terms of being able to do flex fabric storage. Uh, you move down into the actual security aspects of the network and we've got Tipping Point, we've got our uh, uh, virtual security framework and that's essentially how do you plug into uh, the hypervisors, which a lot of people are still concerned about, and be able to protect them in much the same way that you've done with the physical world as you move to that virtual or even a third party's cloud, can you, back to the audit piece, can you actually find out what's going on? And then you piece all that together and you can get all of that from HP or, don't forget, we partner really well. So we have a raft of partners out there that we do with Checkpoint, Symantec. Right. And, and we also have a whole research organization that's looking to where things will be 10, 15 years out and doing uh, demonstrations and, and uh, integration across those activities as well. Archie and Charlie, we're out of time. Thank you very much, you, uh, you, great right. content. You guys are the best and brightest, I'll second <laughs> that. So thank you very much for coming on theCUBE and yeah. sharing your knowledge with us and with our audience. Uh, and we will be right back at VMworld Live 2011. Thanks guys.